Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of the Mayhem Lab. Um, I was doing some research earlier this week and I ran across something that I found very interesting so I thought I would share it. Okay, so doing some, some research and playing with RFID tags and things, um, always very interesting, but uh, I ran across something very peculiar um, I have some HID cards, uh, which, to the best of my knowledge, are legit um, HID cards. They certainly look real. Um, I've seen fake uh, equipment before, and this feels uh, very real. Um, the embossing and everything looks correct. So, to my understanding, this is a, a legit card. Honestly, I don't know, I don't remember where I got this one from. But by playing uh, over the last week, I accidentally rewrote this card, and it was sort of my understanding or through my research, I didn't believe hid cards could actually be written to. Uh, I thought these were read-only cards. Um, so I thought that was pretty interesting. So I wanted to try it again and see if I could actually make it, if I could recreate it or if it was just you know a figment of my imagination. So today we're going to play with um, the Proxmark. I've got the Proxmark uh, 3. Um, RDV setup uh, with a low frequency antenna. Of course, we have our trusty HID reader um, rig over here. Um, let's flip over to the monitor, and I've got on the left side of the screen, we've got the uh, Proxmark software already set up, and I've got the uh, output from the serial terminal of the card reader uh, unit over here. Um, it is also worth noting that through my testing and experimenting, was having some problems actually reading and writing tags. So I did some, uh, some research and I found this piece of software from um, a product called Iceman. And it's uh, just another client for the Proxmark. Um, but I was having some problems and I was trying to figure out if it was a software, if it was a hardware issue, you know, if it was a me issue, what was the problem? So I found this Iceman software it seems to be working a little better than the uh, the standard Proxmark software. So that's what I'm using um, today. So, all right, standard HID card. Let's scan this and we'll notice it picks up um, the facility code and the correct card ID. It says it locks, opens the door and relocks the door. So if I take this one, which is just plain white, so we've got two of them here. We've got uh, one with uh, the actual HID logo on it and one that's just plain white. The plain white one should not uh, unlock the door. There we go. So hits the facility I code is different, the card code is different. And again, the, the blue one with the uh, logo on it opens and unlocks the door. So let's do this. Let's take the white one that has nothing on it to low frequency search. I find the correct, or I find the, the hit ID. There it is. And just to make sure I don't accidentally delete something that I'm going to need later. It's, uh, oh, that's actually the other ID, I think. So that's good. Let's just double check the blue one. Low frequency search. Um, 200, yep, so this is with logo. And we'll call this one without logo. All right, so that way we, we've, got a, we've got a copy, got a record. Okay, cool. So um, again, let's scan the white one that we see up there. Okay, so there is the ID. Let's rescan the one with the logo. There it is. So let's do low frequency hid clone and we'll pop the different ID in there, right? So I'm actually writing to um, the blue hid card now. See, it wasn't a figment of my imagination. I actually could do it. So now I have the blue card, which we saw just a moment ago, had the, um, the other code on it, which had facility code 131. This should now have facility code 26. Um, and, oh, can't read it. There we go. The reader, the software on the reader is still a little bit uh, under development, but all right, so that actually did work. Um, so it's kind of interesting because I always thought these cards were read only, um, but apparently, apparently not. So let's see if we can put the correct code on the, uh, the card without, without a logo on it. 
basically flip them. So low frequency search, just to make sure it can read the card. It sees it, that's fine. Low frequency hid, whoops, hid clone. And let's grab that with logo. That's correct one that should unlock the door. Rid of that nasty space. So that one did not rewrite. Okay. Interesting. So this one refuses to rewrite itself, which is the, the clear, uh, the one with, with no logo. Um, let's rewrite the blue one, or I'm calling it the blue one, the one with the hidden logo on it. Back to the correct code to open the door. So that's pretty interesting. Um, I do not know exactly where I received this card. Uh, it certainly looks legit to me. Um, you know, we could certainly dissect it. I don't know what we'd really find out versus, you know, since the, the chips are so small. Um, but it leads me to believe that this is somehow a fake or a, a clone uh, that it's actually got a T5577 chip in it because I can actually rewrite it. Um, which I find very interesting. So this one I bought from a reputable dealer, um, pretty positive um, that this is a legitimate hid card. And it looks like that is true. Uh, I am not able to write to the hid card. So that um, would be correct. So yeah, I'm not able to write to it. But boy, um, if, you, if you examine these, they look... Um, pretty much identical as far as uh, thickness goes, um, texture, feel, they, they look perfectly fine. And, you know, the numbers on the back and everything like that look great. So it's not like the traditional T5577 cards that I have that look more like a credit card. Um, they're much thinner. These are actually uh, thick like a standard hit card like you'd expect. Um, so yeah, I found that very interesting. So I guess it was just me. Um, I apparently have a, a fake card uh, in my midst, but you know, that's not a problem. Uh, I'm glad we figured it out, but, uh, I just thought that was really interesting. Um, so that's why I picked up this card and, um, um, luckily I was able to prove myself wrong. So, um, hopefully that's interesting. I don't know. Um, that there are, I find it interesting that there are fake cards out there that look this good. Um, I'm going to see if I can figure out where I got this from. And, um, uh, Kevin might remember where we got this one from. So it's it's crazy that they're this good looking um, as far as fake cards go. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of all I had uh, in store for today, at least. Uh, I'm still working on the power uh, issue for the hid card reader, uh, the door emulator. Uh, I also have some some new RFID chips in, which I'm hoping to play with a little bit later. Um, and we'll see how see how that goes. I uh, also have some new chips on order. Hopefully they'll show up uh, soon, but just like everything else, we're sort of waiting on um, the mail these days, which, uh, you know, it's kind of understandable. I know there's lots of uh, other priorities out there as far as uh, mail, getting food to people and things like that, so I'm certainly not in a hurry. Um, so when we get those get those chips, we'll certainly uh, play with those next. So um, thanks, for, thanks for watching, and... Um, I'll see you next time. So, Michael, what can people do if they liked this video? You know, it would be nice if they would subscribe, click the button, and leave a comment. That would be cool. That would be neat. Would we ignore them? No, I try to get back to everybody. Okay. Yeah.